Hey, my Martin here, and welcome to episode 15 of my advanced modding tutorial series. A long time no see, but nevertheless, we're going to do another episode. I'm still continuing, I got some questions uh, about whether or not I was uh, continuing my advanced modding tutorial series, and yes, I am. I just didn't find the time for us to do so. But here we are. And this episode is going to be about another one about multi-blocks actually. But this time we're going to do a different way of implementing a multi-block. Uh, let me just show you what the idea is for today. And today our idea is that we are going to place this structure. So a 3x3x3 uh, three 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 of uh, iron blocks. So we've got a full cube. And in the middle we're going to place our own custom block, which I've added, but uh, doesn't have much implementation apart from a very simple tantity and a block. We're going to put that in the middle, and we're going to place a piece of dirt on top. And then the user can, uh, well, place one or more chests on either side of the dirt block. And the idea is that this is going to function as a, a tree, tree farm, as yeah, the, the tooltip of the block says. But yeah. So this block will have to handle that. It will have to check uh, if the multi block is formed as it should. And it should also place down saplings from this chest. And it should also cut down trees and put the atoms in this chest. Now, we can't use the method we've discussed one month ago, actually, <laughs> if you can believe that. Uh, and the reason is that our last month's, uh, month uh, method relied on us having control on, our, on every block, basically. Um, every block was ours, and we also had tantities in every block of them. So we could detect when a block is removed. However, if we do this right here, there isn't anything in Minecraft that can detect that that happens. So instead we're going to use a technique that's a little bit more heavy for the um, server. It isn't that bad, but if you can choose, if you've got the option, choose the uh, former option from episode 14, the one that is event based. So when we break a block it gets sent to the master tantity and then will be uh, updated. But now we're going to use a pulling technique. So the idea is that this tantity right here, this tree form, will loop through every single block in its uh, multi-block and it's going to see if it sees the expected block. So we're going to do a 3x3 three three and we're going to check if it's iron blocks and dirt and a chest. And if that's the case we we'll have a formed multi-block and then we'll execute whatever is necessary. We are going to perform a few uh, things to uh, make it not that heavy for the server. It's bad if you do 3x3, 9 times 3, 27 block lookups uh, per tick so we're going to make sure that we only do so many blocks per tick or maybe even one block per tick so let's get started so for the record i only added a very uh, simple implementation uh, of a block and a taunt to so let's do this um let's first of all when we place down this block, we're going to well, we're going to pull all blocks we need in our setup. So I guess we can do this. So this is our method that's being uh, called every tick, and we're going to do a uh, private void uh, chuck multi block. There we go. And hmm, let's keep track of a boolean that says formed. So when it's formed, it's going to execute 
uh, the uh, placing down saplings and breaking the logs. So we're going to do another private void uh, update or place sapling. And we are also going to need a private void uh, cut tree. And basically the idea is that we're going to first check the multi-block and then if it's formed we're going to cut the tree and then um, place a sapling. So when we're calling these methods it doesn't mean that there's actually a sapling to place or a tree to be cut but that's being handled right here. In here we're going to check if there's a tree on top and now we're going to cut it down if necessary. Um, in this check multi-block, like I said, we're going to pull not every block at once. Well, maybe we could as a start. Nah, let's do it right straight from the beginning. And how could we do this? I think we could do something like... Uh, Checking X, checking Y, and checking Z. So we're going to use these variables to keep track of where we are currently checking uh, the multi-block. Um, next block checked. Check next block. Or, nah. Okay, so let's actually start up Minecraft to show what I'm going to do. So I'm planning of making these variables be an offset. So eventually we're going to do um, block block equals rule object dot get block, and we're going to do the XYZ of the taunted T and we increase that by the checking X the checking Y and the checking Z and that's going to be that one So the idea is that in here we are going to uh, do something with this and we are going to update these values. And we are going to make sure that, for example, uh, this is the z-axis. So from here, from here it's increasing x and increasing z. So for example we are first going to update the x value. So in here the x value is minus 1 because in here there is the tree form and uh, if we get the x chord that's right here that would be minus 987 this block would be in at 900 minus 988 so that's one block less so in here um, checking x would be minus 1 and uh, checking Y and checking C also would be minus 1 because we're in the uh, corner right here. And here checking Y would be 0 and here checking Y would be 1 and here would be uh, here would be uh, checking C yeah checking Z would be 0 and checking C would be 1. So if we go from minus 1 through one for all three checking variables, we would have a three by three structure. So let's actually do that. If we do, if if we are going to increase checking x by one, and if we then going to check if checking x is more than one. So that's when it's two or more. That's bad because then we're going outside the bounds of the uh, multi-block structure. 
so in that way, case, if we're, for example, traveling like here, we're going, uh, this is minus, x minus 1, we're going to, oh, whoops, uh, x minus 1, we're going to increase by 1, x equals 0, checking x, x, and then uh, again, checking x equals 1, and then again, okay, checking x, x would be 2. So at that point, the if statement will be true. And then we need to make sure that, for example, we're going to go one layer up and then decrease x to minus 1. So we're going to do checking x equals minus 1. And we're going to make sure that we increase checking y by 1. So we're going to check one layer up. And then we're going to do the same thing. And then what it's checking x equals 2 again this if statement will be true this checking x will reset and we are again increasing checking y uh, and then we are going to check if checking y is more than 1 and if that's the case we're going to reset checking y uh, whoops And we're going to increase checking Z by 1. And if checking Z, same deal, if that's more than 1, checking Z equals minus 1. And at that point, when this one is executed, we have returned back to this one. Because at that point, checking X equals minus 1, checking Y equals minus 1, and checking Z equals minus 1. So at the point where we are here, checking x equals 1, uh, equals checking y, equals checking z, they're all 1. So the next step will be checking x plus plus, so that will be 2, so this is true, will be reset, uh, checking y is increased, so that will also be 2, will be the reset, and so on for checking z. So they all will be reset, and that will mean that we return back to this one. So this structure makes sure that we're going to have a different checking x, y, and z, uh, a different checking coordinate, if you will, uh, every tick, basically, every call. Uh, and then we can check the block, and then we need to see, we, well, we need to determine what we expect from that block, because um, for most blocks we expect a block of iron, but in special occasions like the dirt block, we expect from something else. So, hmm, we can do expected block. Let me think about it. Okay, so the idea is that this formed variable only will be set to true when uh, all 27 blocks. Uh, well, were in place. So, not when one does. So, what we could do uh, we can do private boolean was formed last time. Or, yeah, we really need to keep track of where we are last time, really. Um, let's think about it. There we go, I've got an idea. So we're using a variable called found invented block. And if we are at the end of our cycle, we check if we don't have a valid block. Uh, we are going to do form equals if it not if it's if we didn't find an invalid block forms will be true. That's the idea. And we then found invalid block, we set that to false. So then in here we're going to do if we found some blocks, if we do if block is not equal to blocks, that's iron block. We, for example, could do found invalid block equals true. And then at the end of the cycle, it will be updated. 
Mm, but, like I said, we don't want to check for iron blocks all the time. So we could do... Uh, if the checking x equals 1, and the uh, checking x equals 0 actually, and the checking z equals 0, so then we're right in on the axis of the... Let me just show you actually. Um, checking x equals 0 and checking z equals 0. That means that we're on the same... Well, we're on the y-axis of the tantity, of the tree form. So then we can check if the checking y equals 1, because in that case we're checking the block that should be dirt. So if we do if block, well we can do, yeah, if block is not equal to Not equal to blocks of dirt, and just make sure that maybe it's grass for some reason. If it's close to grass, so just to make sure, we're going to do this. Uh, so if it's not dirt and it's not grass, then we find an invalid block at that location. I hope you can all follow along with this. So, again, I'll repeat it. If the checking x equals 0 and the checking z equals 0, we're on this line. And that also would include this block, really. But by specifying that we are wanting to have the checking z to be 1, uh, checking y, sorry, uh, we're checking this block. So this one. Um, and then we're also going to check if we have an inventory. Not just a chest, but we're going to check for an inventory. Um, let's only support one chest, or one inventory for now, because that's easiest. And we can do that by doing... If the x equals zero or the y equal uh, or the z equals zero, only one of the those two occasions, and then the y equals one. So if we're in the top layer, we're going to make sure of that. So if we do else, if y equals one, and Apart from checking Y, we're also going to check if checking X is something else than 0 and... Well, actually, we want to check if either checking X equals minus 1 or 1, or checking Z equals 1 or minus 1. If both are either 1, uh, if both are 1, we are in a corner. And one minus one and one two uh, positive one will get another corner. So we need to make sure that only either one of those two axes um, is one or minus one. So we're going to check if we if we check for not equal to zero, then we're at least checking for if it's one or minus one. And then we do an XOR operation for checking the like that. And I've got my uh, preferences set up so that it removes the uh, brackets when it's not needed. Okay, so if we are in here, we... well, a iron block would be valid, but also a one chest, really. And to check that we only have one chest, we are also going to need another variable. Private int chests 
door if Tori's found. And also, let's keep track of that inventory. So, in here we're going to reset everything. So in our new cycle we haven't found any inventory. And um, we do... Uh, oh, uh, and if formed also depends on if we found an inventory. So if an invalid block isn't found and the inventory is found equals one, the amount of inventories is found is equal to one. Um, so from here we're going to check if the block uh, if block not well we're going to do a tile entity t equals what object that gets tile entity and we're going to give it the this coordinate and that will get us the tile entity at this location and then we're going to check if that tile entity we get so that could be either a chest or a dispenser or any other tile entity so also a, um, a beacon for example but uh, that isn't an inventory so we need to make sure that it is an inventory so if t equals or is an instance of i inventory oh i totally forgot this one if that's the case the amount of inventories we increase that one because we found another inventory and then we do a um, inventory equals there we go so that inventory we are going to use it later to um, to do our placement of saplings and cutting down trees to store our, our items we store it right in there and else, if we haven't found an inventory, uh, it sh the block should be uh, well equal to blocks dot iron block. And if that's not the case, we found an invalid block. So, um, we could test this really. Um, we could do a log.info, let's say forms, and just display that variable. Let's see, uh, well, this, this log should be triggered every well, 27 ticks, so one and a half seconds so that's also nice of to, if you're programming to well, m modularize it test individual pieces of code before you go big I could have coded the entire tree form but we're going to make sure that this part of the uh, multi-block works, the forming oh there we go, formed false no, it's not true at the beginning. Now the question is why? Um, uh, really, we could do a breakpoint. There we go. And we can check what, uh, which values the thing had. Found invalid block false, so we didn't find an invalid block. And inventory found equals zero. Oh, of course it does. Because we checked one. Two. 
we need to check right here because everything is reset after that there you go so let's see what it has to say uh, a client threats oh. Nelson might be a problem because we really should be looking at the server threat because the server is boss Uh, whoops. Okay. We found an invalid block. Okay. Uh, so why is that then? Uh, let's, for example, do it right here. Block that error. Interesting. Oh, um. Wait, uh, block error. Check. Interesting. Well, I know one derp. One derp is that. We are also checking the Tantity block of the farm itself And if that's the case, well Well, that also should be the case Always should be the case because we're If this method has been ticked That means that the Tantity is there So we don't need to check that So we have a special uh, Occasion when checking X equals 0 And checking Equals Zero and checking z equals zero. Oh, well, we are done basically. So first of all, let's check how well that works. And also, while we're at it, let's make sure that everything of our block only happens on the server server because it only needs to be happening on the server. You get strange behavior when you're removing blocks and on the client side I really don't need to so ah there we go uh, not really oh hello there 3 to 1 nice so it's formed now look at the log you'll see it jump to the true when it's true and also when we place down another chest it should do false because now there are two inventories and also should do false when we have zero inventories and gross also should work yep Cool. Nice. Okay, so that's really how our, our how this type of mother block works. You can see it's far simpler than the other one. Um, yeah. Uh, the other one also had inventory management, so there's that. But yeah, um, it's far easier. But don't be tempted to do this uh, quite often because. Like I said, it's more impacting on the server. We're checking a block every tick now. Whereas if we look at our modular storage, well, we only do something on our first run. And apart from that, we aren't ticking at all. So yeah. So let's go over the actual implementation of the farming. Because fun. <laughs> so, uh, for place and saplings. I guess the thing is that we are going to look inside the chest and um, we're going through every slot of the chest and check if there is a sapling in there and if we find a sapling we're going to place it down um, well if there isn't a block already so for example we could do if load object is air block 
And we're not going to check at the Tantity's position, but two blocks up. So that will be this block. If it's not an air block, uh, we are going to check the inventory. And let's just make sure that the inventory is not equal to nil. Um, and we're going to use methods we also use uh, in on the implementation side, really. For example, the camo mine. I saw the inventory, really, but yeah. It also had a get size inventory. So this gets the amount of slots in the inventory. And then we do item stack stack equals inventory get stack in slot. And we need to check if the stack is not equal to null. So it's not an empty slot. And we also need to make sure that if the stack I think a sapling is an is a block behind the scenes so it has an item block so we do get item instance of item block and we use this mechanic already in here get item item block there we go And if the block, well, we could do, we could just check it in a hard way and with block equals block that sapling. Not sure if that will work because that sounds like a generic sapling. But, you know. Oh, but every sapling does have a different metadata, so it should be good, I guess. Um, and then we can do uh, wool object set block, and we're going to set it to the sapling block. I do the y plus two, so. This doesn't remove any items from the inventory yet, so if we grab a spruce sapling... It should have done something, I would think. It did not. Oh, uh, we want to check if it is an air block, not if it is not an air block. There we go. So, oh, that's a, an oak sack thing. Oh, um, hmm. Uh, let's see, how can we get the metadata we need to set the block to? Hello there, a lot of obfuscated names. Oh, get item damage. So the metadata we set is the same as the stack item damage. So we do, and by doing three, we are making sure that we are updating, there you go, we're updating a, a neighbor block next to here, uh, so how can we show that, well we can't really. <laughs> 
But yeah, just use three. I think we've done this before in our real gen part. I've covered that. It's okay, that will place saplings, but we also need to remove them from the inventory. So we can do stack dot stack size minus one. And if the stack stack size is less or equal to zero, we need to remove the stack. We need to set the slot to null. So we do inventory set inventory slot contents. Oh, actually, there's a better way to do this. Inventory decrease decrease stack size, and that's the slot and the amount. It should. There we go. And if we also grab 64, it should take one. There we go. Nice. So that's... And it will all only be executed when our multi-blocks form. So now there are saplings in there, but it won't put them down. Until we put it put down our, our block of iron and we form the multi-block. And uh, next up, the cutting of trees. So we can do... If... Well, we could do every wooden thing, maybe. And, by the way, this entire idea isn't balanced at all. I think it costs a lot of iron. So it doesn't matter, crap, but that's a different story. <laughs> uh, and it's also really overpowered because it doesn't use any power if it's plug and play really. And if you've got a really big tree it will cut it down entirely after we've implemented this. Because if we do... Um, what we could do... Maybe do something like this, and then do a int offset y while block gets material equals material dot wood. So we check the material wood, so that also will cut down fences, but bit. Let's do a world set block x, y, z to blocks dot air and do y chords plus offset y and plus two also. So and then also do. There we go. So basically the idea is we are going to check the block above, well, where, well we were setting the sapling. Um, if that turns to do a wood block or wooden material block, we're going to set that same block to error. Offset y equals uh, zero. Then we're increasing the offset y, meaning we're going to look one block above that, because then we're going to set this block variable to this with the offset being 1. And as long as the material still boot, we're going to set that block to error. So this will mean that we are removing boot. Let's see how that works. There we go. It removed all wood blocks. So that works beautifully. Really. Now we sh still need to well, put the wood blocks we've harvested into the chest. So 
so that's another thing. Um, we can get the block drops if we break a block. Um, I know that. Get drops or something. Uh, not world, in block. There we go. Uh, let's see if there is a better way. I don't think there is really. So we're going to use this um, gap blocks. And that will return a list of all items a block will drop. So for example, uh, wheat will drop a one wheat and a few seeds. But wood will drop a wood block. So maybe we can list item stack items equals block get drops and then the world objects and the same XYZ uh, metadata and again that same XYZ and at this point it might be nicer to put it in a um, in variables uh, or make the offset C e equal there we go and we don't do this but this we don't do that but that and we don't do this but this and we do this and S chords and Z chords and fortune Zero. We're not using any fortune pickaxes. So then we the items we get. Oh, also by the way, make sure we it still works. Yes, we don't have any. Wood. And the items for every item we grab. We're going to try and put it in the chest, and we can do that by using uh, a utility method we have in our hopper, in a hopper. Uh. And there are a few, so let's see which one we need. Yeah, most of it is obfuscated, so it's, so it's a little bit hard to see, but yeah. Um, it's a static method, that I know. And I think it's this one, but... Uh, it will need a world XYZ and an item stack we put in. So let me check it down and we'll be back. There we go, it's this one. It's taking an inventory, uh, a stack we want to put in, and the other one was. Oh, yeah, the, oh, right, the side we want to put in items. So let's use that. That the inventory, and uh, that's the inventory thing. The stack we want to put in the item and the site. Let's put in from whatever from the bottom, I think. And the item stack returned is the item stack that wasn't able to be put in. Um, Oh, 
Okay, and um, we also need to make sure that that inventory is not equal to null. So we do if inventory stuff is equal to null, then we're going to cut down a tree. And if the remainder is not null, if there, if we, there isn't any uh, space in the inventory left, then we could drop it on the ground, or we could. Um, well, not do it all together. But I guess dropping it on the ground would be easier for now. So we can do world object, font team world new entity item, and we've done this before, so I'm not going to explain it in detail. Export. And let's drop it right where the sapling used to be. Uh, and let's also drop the item remainder. So now, there we go, nine spruce wood when the blocks are broken. And let's make sure that this uh, thing works. So let's block off the entire inventory. And there we go. It drops all the blocks. And we got wood. <laughs> Thank you, achievements. So um, I guess that's it, really. If we think about it, it should work for every type of tree. And we could even do some weird things like, oh, fence. Mickey, oh, uh, that will only work for spruce wood, really. If we have got any trees with branches, then that wouldn't work. But with uh, the method we explained with our other multi-block tutorial, you could figure out how you could do that by tracking down which blocks are connected to which wood blocks, and then, yeah. But then I'm not going to show that. Yeah, you could do weird stuff like this. And that also would uh, break the blocks. If we do Will this work actually? Yeah. But this will. Ah, I'm not too I'm not quick enough. Boom. There we go. So yeah, that's a little bit cheaty, but yeah. It will uh, the tutorial went about the multi block uh, structure and that's what we did so I hope uh, you learned a lot from this see you all next time I'm not sure what I'm going to cover next time but uh, you'll see it <laughs> bye bye